In this video, we will first review how physical I.O. and diagnostic parameters are configured in Telepace Studio, and then demonstrate the use of I.O. boards and system data objects in Remote Connect for the Skatapak X70 models. Here we can see a new Telepace Studio application. First, I'll change the controller type. In this case, we'll set it to a Skatapak 334. Now, if we expand controller default modules and we double click here, we can see the default I.O. capability of this RTU. The controller board has certain I.O. tied to Modbus. And the lower board, the 5607 board, also has its I.O. Here I can have a look at the analogs in and I can see analog in zero, for example, is tied to Modbus register 30001. Note that all data points in a standard SCADA pack must be tied to Modbus registers, which is somewhat limiting. We can add expansion I.O. modules if needed. For example, in the digital input section, we could add a 5414 16 point digital input module. And note that again, each digital input is tied to a Modbus point. These default registers can be modified if desired. There are two additional categories. We have configuration modules for providing access during runtime to items such as controller IP settings, and these are as well tied to Modbus registers. And we have diagnostic modules. For example, looking at the Modbus protocol, and we can, again, access these via Modbus registers. Again, it's important to remember that every physical I.O., configuration, or diagnostic point must be assigned to a Modbus register. In a large application, this can use many valuable Modbus registers. Here's one last quick look at typical Telepace functionality. Here we've got a program taking up eight rungs of logic simply to measure controller scan time. It must be run for 60 seconds to be accurate, and it uses a significant amount of memory and Modbus registers as well. Now let's have a look at how physical I.O. and configuration and diagnostic objects are accessed when using Remote Connect for the X70 type skater packs. The RTU type is selected when creating a project but if you need to change it, you can right-click on the Skaterpack X70 Controller Settings DTM, go to Additional Functions, and Project Settings. And here you can change the controller type if necessary. To view, edit, and add physical I.O. modules, here on the Configuration tab, we can expand the Physical I.O. section and select Local. Here we can see the default controller module, the Skatapak 474, and to the right is a list of all the default channels created. For analogs in, you can scroll down and change the input type, and for counters, you can change the counter type at this location as well. You can double click on any channel shown here and then change its name if desired, assign it a Modbus or DNP3 point number, make other configuration changes as well. You can assign it to a logical group, which allows related objects to more easily be monitored in an object browser, or you may prefer to edit these while on the Objects tab, where all objects are displayed, both physical and internal. We'll look at that shortly. Other physical I.O. devices can be added here by clicking the Add I.O. button. In this case, I'll add the 5414 digital input module. You can see here that we can change its name and the module address. We can edit other parameters such as the input filtering and the line frequency. In the next step, you can choose to allow Remote Connect to automatically create objects with default names for each I.O. point, or choose to manually configure these later. Here, I'll select Automatically Create, and we click Next. 
And now we're asked if I also want to assign Modbus or DMP3 addresses automatically. More commonly, you may decide to assign addresses to just a few items later. After clicking Apply, this configuration change would be ready to write to the RTU. While we're here, we can also double click on the SCADA pack itself and see that it has configurable parameters as well. For example, input filtering and analog output type. On the Objects tab, we can see all of the physical objects created by this project. If we expand the Analogs group and scroll down, a few additional objects can be seen. These are automatically created analog status objects tied to the physical I.O. board, in this case, the board status code, the temperature, and the supply voltage. We can also expand the digital section and see that there are status parameters in the digital section as well. There are many other internal status and configuration objects which can be added into a project. One way to see these is to click the Add Object button. And then in the Source Type area, we would select System Data. And then we have a list of system data references. If we were to scroll down and pick one of these, for example, SysLogic, we're then presented with a box which would allow us to enter the specific object name. Well, how would we know what name to use? That's where the Remote Connect user manual is very helpful. We can open the help documentation, and we may want to do a search on the term system data, for example. Multiple items may appear with the same basic uh, search parameter, so we could click on the title column here, scroll down and find these items, system data. We're looking for multiple instances of system data. And here we are. Okay, so first we see one of them is in the porting guide for SCADA pack converting from older SCADA packs. That's not what we want. We want system data in the operations technical reference manual. We can now display that and we get all the help required here. We can select any item here, have a look, and perhaps this is what we need, perhaps not. If not, we can hit the back button, and perhaps we wanted syslogic. Click on that, and here is a very helpful item. Syslogic masked current time will give us the last scan time of the main or masked program in the Remote Connect logic. There are other parameters such as the masked max time and min time. Back in the logic editor, we can now add this name, masked current time, and we can move that up to the name of the object by clicking this button. We would now add it to an object group, and the logic variable type for this one, back in help, it would have told us that this was an unsigned integer. We could then use this status object's value parameter in a logic application. To learn more about the SCADA pack, access the user documentation on the Schneider Electric Exchange shop and the Schneider Electric website. Also, see our videos on YouTube.